All right, we're live. Um, we should wait for some people to join in. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to this uh, beautiful Tuesday morning. As usual, it's Bobby from Demi Toss Coffee, and I got my trusty sidekick here as always, the mighty, mighty Minka. And today we are going to be talking about how to make uh, espresso using an AeroPress. This is one of the uh, requests you guys uh, sent our way, so we're going to give it our best here. Um, as we wait for people to jump on this Instagram live segment, we're going to talk a little bit about espresso and why I put espresso in quotes when I'm talking about the AeroPress. Um, but first, let's heat up some water. All right. Uh, well, before we get into all that, a couple updates real quick. I wanted to send a few shout outs to cafes that are still open uh, and that might be open in your neighborhood. So first and foremost, as always, found in Eagle Rock. Go say hi to Annie. She is a gem of a human being and they're doing great things with coffee over there. Confidential, we're representing Confidential today in Long Beach. If you're in Long Beach, go say hi to Denise. Um, Cafe Aficionado out in Northridge. Uh, we have Constellation out in La Cañada, Flintridge. Um, newly added to our family of wholesale customers, Handy Market out in Burbank, um, and then Reverent Coffee Bar just reopened for a few uh, short hours this week. Um, go out there if you're in Rolling Hills Estate out near Palos Verdes, always a good spot. Um, fantastic guy out there brewing phenomenal coffee. Okay, so let's talk about espresso real, real quick while the uh, water heats up um, and why I put espresso in quotes. So espresso is a very technical term. It means pushing nine bars of, uh, putting water through a small puck using nine bars of pressure. So unless you're superhuman, um, you will not be able to make espresso using an AeroPress because nine bars of pressure is the equivalent of something like 140 pounds per square inch of pressure. And look, I'm in pretty good shape and I can't generate that kind of force through an AeroPress. So uh, kudos to anyone who can. Hi. Um, but I, I definitely can't. So when I say espresso, I think we're all talking about something a little bit different than the technical definition of an espresso, which is um, something that's thick, something that's viscous, something that has um, a lot of body that's in a very small quantity of, she's had enough of me today, something that's in a very small quantity of water. Um, I lost my co-host who wants to go outside and sunbathe. Can't really blame her, can you? Um, so, uh, so anyways, so we have, um, so what we're gonna try to replicate today is that same viscosity, that same uh, bit of uh, mouthfeel and concentration of flavor using an AeroPress, uh, which I think will, we can get kind of close to it. Now, if anyone thinks they're gonna get all this crema and all this like lovely flavor using an AeroPress, you're going to be very sad, very disappointed because you're just, it's just not gonna happen. Um, but we can get pretty close. And I have three different methods for you guys to try today. So uh, for those of you playing at home, uh, give these a go and let me know what you get and if you get anything um, decent. Um, a couple other quick pointers to discuss. We, um, we're gonna use a very fine grind for all of these brew methods. Um, not quite powdered sugar, but you're getting pretty close to that kind of fineness. And then also um, you're gonna wanna use Anytime I talk about hot water, we're talking about water that's just off of the boil. Um, yeah, and that's it. I mean, I think, I think one thing to keep in mind is that all of these methods require a lot of force as you're pressing down on the AeroPress. And so, I mean, if it hurts your arm, it hurts your shoulder, well, never said it was gonna be easy. So, um, let's get started. The, the first method is basically you're going to agitate a whole bunch. You're gonna use a short amount of water, a little bit of coffee, and then press really hard. So I call this, uh, Agitate in short. So, and if you guys have any questions, guys, feel free to um, just fire away here and um, we'll get started. So, um, the first method uses the inverted AeroPress setup. So, you're going to take your filter, put it in a little chamber here, get it wet. And um, you're going to take the plunger, put it in about halfway. Okay, like so. Tear your scale out. We're gonna use 17 grams of coffee here. I 
think for in terms of what kind of coffee you want to use, the darker the roast for espresso purposes, the better. Um, I didn't have our espresso blend handy today, so we're using actually a pretty light El Salvadorian coffee that's a micro lot that I love. Um, it's not even on our website yet, we're testing out the roast, but it should be on the site soon. Uh, but if I can get this to taste even remotely like an espresso shot, uh, you should be able to do this with our espresso blend, um, no problem. Okay, so we got our coffee in 17 grams. We're gonna put 50 grams of water and then we're gonna stir real crazy. So, yeah, and all of this will be on the blog later today, so no worries there. So we're gonna go 50 grams of water. There we are. And then stir. Stir for about 10, 15 seconds maybe. Make sure everything's nice and wet and agitated. You wanna create some of that um, frothiness see some bubbles and this will really draw out some of those flavors so once you're done stirring cap it and again you're gonna press like how when you flip this over onto your cup Like I said, it's not easy when you have really fine grounds to get um, to push hard on the on, the, on an arrow press. Um, and so uh, I don't know if you can see that well. There's no crema on this, but it's a very thick shot. It's not super creamy. Definitely syrupy though. You get a nice syrupy sweetness. It's actually surprisingly good. Um, so that's one method. That's the if you're gonna do the inverted method, I think that gets you a lot of sweetness out of it. It's still not espresso. I mean, it's probably closer to what new third wave shops are pulling with these like super long pulls that are more like coffee shots. Um, but for mine, for what I'm looking for in espresso, this is probably not getting the job done. Um, but you know, it's okay. Um, in, in a, like I said, you know, if you're if you're at home and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on an espresso machine, this will this will get you pretty close. Um, all right, so that's one method. The next method I think gets a little more creative and a little more fun. Uh, I'm gonna reset this and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the second method. I call it uh, fake it till you make it. Um, this is gonna be a standard setup, meaning non-inverted. Um, so we're going to get your filter, wet it a little bit. Swap some water on the counter, that works. And then we're gonna get your whole thing set up here. I'm debating getting one of those. These are great for home, I mean. Um, but again, if you're trying to make espresso using it, you might be a little sad about it, but um, it's uh, it gets the job done for coffee in a heartbeat, that's for sure. Okay, so um, you're gonna get it set up normally. I like to use um, our standard espresso parameters for this. So basically what we're doing with this method is faking uh, an espresso shot. So we're gonna tamp, we're gonna do the whole nine yards. So I'm gonna use 18 grams of coffee here. Almost there, all right. And then here comes the fun part. You're gonna take a second filter. Right, you're gonna make this wet as well. And you're gonna put it on the end of something long and narrow. It could be a spice uh, jar, it could be, this is a, um, you know, some kind of cleaner for pots and pans. You're gonna stick it on the end here so it sticks, like so. And you're gonna tamp the coffee into a puck, much like you would a normal espresso machine, right? So, uh, so we're gonna tamp here and just gently press down, not too hard, not too soft, but you know, you're trying to create um, that same sort of vacuum seal thing that you get with an espresso uh, porta filter. All right, so um, once you've done that, it should kind of look like this on the inside. It'll be a little, um, almost like a bowl of paper. The next part, you're gonna get your hot water, and you're gonna pour it right on top. And again, we're doing, we're faking the espresso, so we're gonna use what our standard is, which is 25 grams of, uh, 18 grams of coffee for 25 grams of water. 
and the water will just sit on top of there and then you're just gonna press like crazy and drive it down. Right, so here we go. And the water will literally just sit on top of this paper filter until you're ready to press. And then you're just gonna press like super hard. I mean, this one's even harder than the last one. Because again, you're trying to fake that espresso nine bars of pressure, so. And if this is way too hard for you to press, I will just coarsen in the grind a little bit um, and uh, it'll be a little bit easier to press through. Um, I got a question here, is there a preferred roast for the Aeropress? Uh, any coffee you like for the Aeropress is gonna be delicious coming out of an Aeropress. Um, if you're trying to get an espresso sort of crema and that rich dark roast, I would go with um, an espresso blend of some sort. So this is definitely more viscous than the last one. Obviously, um, we've used a little bit more coffee and a little bit less water, um, but there's a whole lot less agitation going on. The last one we stirred for a good 15, 20 seconds, then pressed it through. This one, it's all pressure going through a puck. But we did tamp it a bit and there's a lot less water, so it's a little more oily. I don't know if you can see that very well in, you know, in Instagram stuff, but it's very viscous, it's very thick. Um, it's very creamy. Um, so I'm going to go and get the second one going here. And our third one going here. Um, but this is this is definitely getting closer. We are almost um, almost there. I got a question here, do you have a coffee grinder that you recommend? Oof, that is a loaded question. Anything from Baratza is gonna be fantastic. Um, but if you don't wanna spend that kind of money, I would suggest getting a hand ground, a hand grinder made by hand ground, we sell them on our website. For a, a manual grinder they're great easy to adjust big enough to hold enough coffee and you can just crank them through it's pretty pretty mellow um, but you can spend you know thousands of dollars on a grinder so it just depends on what your budget is and if you want an electric or a manual uh, but the hand ground for the manual ones are great uh, anything by Baratza for an electric on grinder can't go wrong Okay, the last one isn't exactly a brew method as much as it is a little doodad that you will add to the end of your AeroPress. Uh, so this is called the Prismo. It's made by Fellow. They make phenomenal kettles and brewers and, and all kinds of glassware. Um, I think this this is this is gonna get you as close as you're ever gonna get to an es uh, espresso blend, espresso consistency out of an AeroPress. Part of it is it's a, it's a pressure activated chamber in here and it also uses a metal filter versus the paper filters that we've been using and that'll make it easier for the oils and some of the the grit and stuff to get through to give you that viscosity that we like in an espresso the other nice thing about the way this setup is is it uses this little the, the coffee's coming out of this little hole so you can put it on a much smaller container um, and that'll keep some of that uh, thickness together as opposed to like pressing into like a giant mug which is just going to break up any chance you ever had for crema. So um, I'm gonna reset this one more time and we'll get this going. And we're just gonna follow their uh, recommended parameters for this. So this just sits at the end of the espresso, uh, at, the, at the end of the AeroPress, instead of the, uh, instead of this guy, you're just gonna lock this guy into place, put it on top of your uh, uh, cup, and again, I'm using a fun little espresso cup this time as opposed to a mug. And we're going to add 20 grams of coffee. All right. And then we're going to add 50 mils of water here. So we got our 50 grams of water, and then you're gonna stir for 10 seconds, start a timer, 
and then we're gonna let it steep for a minute. So um, while we all sit here staring at me stirring and waiting for a minute, fire off any questions you have. Um, let me know what else you guys are looking for in terms of demonstrations. Um, I do apologize for my co-host uh, ditching us. It's sunny outside and she definitely wanted a sunbathe, so she uh, she abandoned me in my time of need. Uh, but like I said, this this little gadget is is um, it's great. It's like twenty five bucks on their website. We don't sell it, uh, but it is a very very useful thing to have at home if you really are trying to do like a fake espresso. The only other device I, I say that would get you cl even close to real espresso at home uh, without an, a real espresso machine, Flair, F-L-A-I-R, makes um, like a manual sort of lever machine that I've used. I have one here, I can demonstrate it another time if you guys want me to. And that'll get you crema, that'll get you like proper, almost espresso. It just takes forever to set up and, and pull the shot and you gotta heat it up and it has all these different moving parts. So it's not the easiest thing in the world, um, this is way easier, but you're still not going to get the full uh, range of um, you know, crema and thickness and all that with this. So we're about a minute here. I'm just going to press right into the little cup. Again, don't throw your shoulder off trying to do this, but um, the finer the grind, the harder the press on these things, just in general. So. for today all right so you can see here we have a little bit of crema um, a little bit of that oily top on the surface not quite what you're gonna get at, you know in a proper espresso machine but um, this is pretty close I mean this is this is good enough where if you're gonna you know throw some milk into there and it'll actually kind of taste like uh, you know like a latte uh, iced latte if you will so um, for my money's worth this is this is as close to uh, espresso as you're gonna get and for you know a $25 add-on to your AeroPress can't complain right so this is this is probably my my suggestion if you wanted to get something that's gonna get you pretty close to home espresso using an AeroPress yeah I think the key thing uh, that's, that's actually pretty good uh, the key thing is to get a to use a very fine grind and really just press as hard and as fast as you can is clean up easy. Clean up is so easy on an AeroPress. You literally just take the top off and just pop out the puck and you're done. And then you just rinse it off. Um, that is probably the best thing about an AeroPress is how easy the cleanup is on this. So, um, yeah, that's actually pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with this. So I would definitely, um, I would definitely suggest buying one of these little fellow add-ons. I think they're, it's going to get you as close as you can, really. Um, what beans are, am I using? So today I'm using um, a micro lot from El Salvador. It's a Pacamara. It's not even on our website yet. We're testing out the roast. It's a very light roast, and I still got a little bit of creme out of it. So you can imagine with like an espresso blend, you could probably get a little bit more of that richness, a little bit more of that viscosity that you want in a coffee. Uh, I just didn't have any on me. But this is pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with this. I, uh, especially if you're stuck at home and you don't want to spend six thousand dollars on an espresso machine, this is pretty solid. Um, so I would, I would recommend buying this guy. Uh, we don't sell it on our website. I have no relationship with Fellow other than we sell some of their kettles. So this is totally unbiased on my end of things. I would hop on their site and buy a buy one of these if you really want to get this done at home. Um, otherwise, I would say the second method we demoed earlier might be your best move. Um, Still not great, but not bad, not bad. Like I said, if the goal of this is just to have something a little thicker to add some milk to and some sugar, uh, you could do a lot worse. So um, yeah, I hope this was uh, fun for everyone. And again, this was someone, someone requested this demo, so we love the demo. So please let me know what else you guys are curious about. If you want us to figure something out or come up with a drink or just throw out something like, hey, I have I don't know, sage at home, what can I do with sage? Like, let me know, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with something and make a fun drink and we'll demo it on our um, brewing with Bobby and Minka, even though Minka ditched me today. So, I hope everyone's safe, I hope everyone's healthy. And um, again, thanks so much for, for tuning in. Um, got a new question, what roast did you use for the Cubanos? Uh, for that, I used our espresso one, um, the last little bit of it. But any coffee will really work with if you steep it long enough and make a cold brew out of it. Um, 
have you seen the Korean coffee video? And I have no idea what the Korean coffee video is, but please email it to me and I will take a look at it. Because um, I'm very curious about what they're doing in Korea. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, what else you guys got for me? What's up, John? Uh, well, if that's all the questions you guys have, uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back on Friday, 10 a.m. And we will have something uh, for you guys then. Maybe either another coffee cocktail or... Um, I don't know, maybe I'll do whatever this coffee, uh, Korean coffee video is doing and we'll, we'll take it from there. Thanks everyone. I hope this was fun and we will, uh, we'll be around. Cheers.